today is a Labor Day weekend for me. So I am like living the life. I've got some pizza rolls. I'm here with Kristen. I mean, I have to work Monday, so I'm sad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll live. And we are discussing bottom feeders today. Which first, we Kristen. got from our fabulous sponsor. Well, we paid for it from our fabulous sponsor because it was a pick of the month because we were so excited about it. And that's InStockTrades.com. And where- Kristen, tell me yeah. if I'm wrong, but can you get up to 50% off? You know what? Sometimes, sometimes it's even 53% off if you use the current 3% extra code that's happening this weekend until Labor Day. You're I kidding. think it's it's the weekend. I think that's the code. Is that right? Do we know? Um, I I'll could absolutely check my email because I'm, you know what? In stock trades, yeah. they will email you to tell you what the code is. And that's when I get excited and I'm like, I can finally place an order and because Kristen, I need my extra food. correct. Yeah. The, the code it's is, the it's the weekend. No apostrophe. Because, because indeed, though it's Friday, it is the weekend. Mm-hmm. Right? That's right. That's how that works. <laughs> if you can't tell, we're having a really chill show today, but you should go to InStockTrades.com. I'm going to go there. I'm going to order some stuff. I'm going to order Heathen Volume 2, which is the last volume of Heathen. It is currently 40% off. It's on the front page. It's our pick of the month. That's right. We are bringing you that extra discount. Get it out. It's only $8.99. I mean, come on, guys. What are we I doing? Mean, you're like losing money by not buying it. <laughs> Pretty well, much. And while we're at it, you guys should know that if you're looking for a book to rub on your face because it feels so soft, <laughs> it's heathen. Oh, yeah. what up? We got some cool people in the chat. We got Jesse. We got oh, Miguel. what's up? And our new friend Hayden, who's a new oh. bud. Thanks again for joining us. Hayden's a new bud, great bud, amazing bud. Amazing for letting bud. us know about that Spice Girls movie. Yeah, so later on yeah. <laughs> in the in the group, uh, uh, our viewer and my friend Lee, Lee. posted a screen cap of, of, of Kristen and I and our, our <laughs> shared reaction to Spice Girls. <laughs> Just it was the, so good. Both of us in the prey hands. It was pretty beautiful. <laughs> I still yeah. think about it. It looks like they've also got some good uh, releases and deals of the week right now, too, at In Stock Trades. Um, so the new Harley Quinn Breaking Glass is out, which I didn't know. Yeah, That's that looks good. Marika Tamaki. Our, our, Tamaki our, yeah. our girl, our girl. And it also looks like they have a big sale on a lot of the other DC Inc. line oh, graphic yeah. novels. That includes Under the Moon, A Catwoman Tale, uh, Mara Tidebreaker, Kami Garcia's new Raven book, uh, as well as Super Sons. So, Super Sons is four dollars, guys. What are we I doing? Mean, I'm gonna buy it. That's fantastic. And I'm absolutely gonna buy Harley Quinn Breaking Glass. I mean, you have to. I've got to. You know, uh, that cover is pretty cool too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, also, War of the Realms Journey into Mystery of the Trade Paperback is out. So if you're a fan of those good, good McGroy boys, ooh, who is that? Have to read that because uh, they wrote it. <laughs> All right, so I guess we should talk about bottom feeders. So let's preface this real quick, right? <clears throat> now, the reason why we picked bottom feeders without even having read it as our pick of the month um, was because Upgrade Soul upgraded my soul <laughs> and really threw me for a loop. I mean, when Kristen recommended that to me, I was like, okay, because the cover is weird. And she's like, yeah. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm not going to tell you anything about Upper, Upgrade Soul. And I won't. You should just read it. Trust me. And I did. And let me tell you, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. But you all should just read Upgrade Soul because it blew my mind. I'm still not over it. I still think about that book on the reg. Now, a lot of comic books don't sit with me like Upgrade Soul sat with me. And Bottom Feeders is pretty darn close. <laughs> yeah, I read that early January. It was one of the first books I read this year. And I still think about it, just like you said. And I think it infected my soul. I think that's the best way to put it. Oh, it God. really, like, did things to me. I remember when I came on here after we were doing a show and I was like, guys, this book, just read it. Go into it blind. Let it hurt you. <laughs> like, 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 let yourself have a reaction. Don't read anything about it. Don't read any reviews. Don't read 
anything. And I heard uh, it's been optioned for a movie, and it's won a lot of awards. So can you imagine? I'm I'm excited. I mean, oh, it's gonna be wonderful. But like, it's I, one of those things that like with the comic like medium. It, it affected me so much. So to actually see like someone playing these things out, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle it. We'll see. <laughs> but but anyone, yeah, anyone who hasn't read it, check it out. Lionforge put it out. Um, it, it's probably very cheap on IST, actually. Let me, let me look into that. Um, oh, yeah. And while you do that real quick, um, Hayden was saying that they wanted to get that new uh, Harley book. I really, I really... You know, I haven't read it yet, so I can't say anything, but I can say that Mariko Tamaki is one of my favorite writers out there. The best. Um, We love, 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 love Supergirl being super that she wrote. I'm a huge fan. Um, Just absolutely recommend. Oh, and also, you should read uh, Laura Dean Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me also, because I think you'd like it. I loved it. Uh, Upgrade Soul is 30% off on IST, so you can get it for $14 right now, plus an extra 3%. Oh, that's great. So, subject to hand, so basically, we knew we had to pick up this book, Bottom Feeders, written B-T-T-M-F-D-R-S, which I thought was cool, no vowels. <laughs> Very neat. Um, written, again, by Ezra Clayton Daniels, with art by, and I'm so sorry, Pass Passmore, Ben Passmore. I always I feel very bad for a lot of comic book writers and illustrators because I just keep mispronouncing names probably, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I value your work any less. I promise. And this art, we can just start there if you want. Um, like it absolutely killed the whole time and the color palette. I mean, it was oh just it's God. fantastic. I like, love the layout. Like I mean, it's fantastic. I also love just the let's talk. We love talking about how a book feels and the shape of it. Ooh, um, this is very textured. You can't see from yeah. home. Yeah, but there's a lot of really neat texture happening on with the, so, this book. There's some spot gloss of like a creature you will see in the book that you can only see in the light. I don't think you can even oh tell on camera. Even... Yeah, like you can feel it too. But yeah, that's one of the uh, like creatures of the book, and that I love that. And I love the size of this. It's, it's, you know, it's nice to get a different kind of format for some collected editions sometimes, because I really, really like this. I like the way it's laid out. It feels more like you, like what, a, like a, uh, you know. There's a size comparison to a regular yeah. comic book. It's interesting. But I like this sort of like, it reminds me of like reading the funnies or something. I like this kind of layout every once in a while. It feels very comical, mm-hmm. which I appreciate it too, just because of like, if. <sighs> The art style and the layout really felt like it was in opposition with the type of story, which I appreciated. That's kind of a weird way to look at it, but like, there's some crazy shit happening in here, which I <laughs> expected from Ezra. <laughs> um, of course. But then you have this almost comical style, so it's very interesting because you're not sure what kind of tone to take it sometimes. I, I love that. It's like a sad song that sounds happy. Yeah, I think yeah. It's like that's what makes all the creepy stuff really stand out to you. Oh yeah, Hayden says it, remi- it reminds him of the Peanuts collection. Oh yeah, is, it's, it's kind of layout. Yeah, it's a similar size too. But, oh, with the colors, it feels so like eighties. I, I don't know how to describe it. Oh that. yeah, no, definitely. Well, Just even like colors. So the main character, she um, is a uh, what do you call it? She designs clothes. <laughs> A fashion designer. Yeah, that's fashion designer. Ooh, it's been a long week, guys. I apologize. <laughs> like, you know, words. I don't know them. Um, and, and that really goes with, like, her style of clothing that she designs. And the colors, too. I mean, also, again, just about the book, it's a little hardcover. And you know I love a good flop open. Ooh, yeah, no girl, trouble. It stays this. open the whole time. Oh, oh it's so Ooh. nice. The whole it time, even purse. toward the end. Where's wherever you want to ah, go. Oh. It's so nice. <laughs> I, you know, I hope, I hope Ezra watches this, but also I'm worried he's gonna be like, <laughs> like they're just talking about the book opening. <laughs> Listen, that matters to us, though. It matters to so much. This is the end, and it's still staying open. Like That's that crazy. doesn't happen. It's so nice. Just way to go, Fantagraphics. This is a very nice quality book. We so yeah, that means that. the story, like, we don't want to, I'm not going to spoil it too much for you, because I think it's really important not to. I want to review mm-hmm. this without doing that. Um, Plus his books are, I mean, go into a blind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go into everything blind. But yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. Absolutely. We it. So basically, we center around, I forgot her name. I'm so sorry. 
Oh my gosh, I did too. <laughs> what if it was um, never mentioned? I'm sure it was. Is it on the back? No, it's not. No, no, it's Anyways, not. We, have, we have this main character who's this really cool fashion designer. And um, she's from this part of the, like, this kind of like a, uh, how do I describe it? This sort of like rundown part of town that is going through some gentrification, it kind of seems like, right? And so she's from this part of the town, but she also recently moves into this like apartment in this kind of rundown building. It used to be something else. I think it's a testing facility or something. Darla. And she gets this really cool studio apartment basically there. Right. And um, she's just kind of dealing with like this uh, balance in her life of like locals versus her like hipster kind of privileged friend, I guess is the best way to describe it. Mm-hmm. But she finds out that there is some potentially creepy, weird stuff going on in her building. Uh, and that's my, that's a bit, like my quickest synopsis without giving it too much away. But I really dug this. And if you read Upgrade Soul, you're going to notice that this is, you're going to get a lot of those same unnerving feelings throughout the book. Because in, in Upgrade Soul, I felt uncomfortable a lot. And in this, yeah. I felt uncomfortable a lot. Because there's a lot of really creepy characters, and you don't really know where things are going, and you don't really know, like, what's everything started from. Um, something I do want to talk about is this one panel, though. <laughs> this, when she finds this art, and there it says, don't touch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's this little, <laughs> this little guy. Because <laughs> she moves into his apartment, right? She keeps finding just creepy stuff. Like, she keeps running into weird people, like, the, her, like, uh, landlord is really kind of weird and secretive. Yeah. And, a little creepy. Yeah, like, it's just... Yeah, and the stuff with her friend, you know, her friend is white, and there's moments and, and things throughout the whole thing where her friend is clearly, like, trying to, um, yeah, I don't know the best way to put it, but... I think she's trying to out trauma her, almost, in a way, because she's always trying to, like... Well, in using, like, her like blackness to be cool right which is a whole problem so and and that's a problem throughout the whole book and real life and that was interesting it's something that like i can't think of many other comics that like explore that and have like this horror element and do them both so well so there's a lot of social commentary there's the gentrification thing and then there's the thing with her friend that's all throughout it and it's it's so well done and i mean anytime i read something like that i'm just like all white people need to read this book you know like like, yeah. I feel like you know everyone can learn some stuff from from their story oh yeah because you have that point right where she like her friend comes to see her apartment she's like oh this is really shitty this is super gross because originally they were gonna move in together and this girl just super drops her and she's like mm-hmm. the fuck all right well i'll just live in this creepy apartment by myself cool but then once she learns like a cool guy is nearby and people think it's like a really cool area then she's like oh my god yeah i totally live this our place blah 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 and the girl's like the fuck (laughs) what like i'm from this area and you you shat on it and now you want to make it yours and things like that just keep like happening and interesting oh yeah and she continually can like acts this way throughout the book even um, just the side of like Chicago that she lives on, she like kind of craps on that until again it's cool for her, and it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't know. And I love how that was explored and how it ended. Mm-hmm. Which I I won't spoil, but that's a, I, it's it's so hard to talk about it without spoiling it. And there are so many moments that I'm like, I want to tell you what happens with that, and you know, if anyone's read it they'll know what i'm talking about but all the drawings and like what that ends up happening and that crazy thing at the end mm, it's so good i loved it i really loved it it was not at all what i expected like i don't know what i expected i went into a blind just like upgrade soul and i don't know what i was expecting there either <laughs> but it's not it's not no it's never what i think it's gonna be no and honestly i don't even know what to compare it to <laughs> I don't either. I don't think I've read... I mean, and that's great. That's what you want to say when you read something. I've never read a story like this. Yeah. 
and it'll keep you guessing. And I don't think the ending is expected. At least I didn't expect that. No, I didn't either. And that's nice too. <clears throat> Yeah, I honestly, this is, I'm not surprised. I knew, I had a feeling going into this. I was trying to be, like, cautiously optimistic. Because, you know, Upgrade Soul is amazing. And I was like, well, we'll see. I don't want to get my hopes up. But it was it was great. I'd super recommend it. I can't think of anything else like it. It's just, I think it's a must-have for your shelf. It's a very easy read. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I think you'll pick it up and you won't put it down. That's exactly what I did with Upgrade Soul, and that's what I did with this. This was an even quicker read, and I mean, the way it's laid out, too, like, can I show that? Yeah, I can show that. Yeah. Um, You know, the minimal amount of panels on each page, and the way it just flops open, again, (laughs) the quality book, it is so easy to just keep reading, and you're just going to feel nice the whole time. You You don't have to struggle against the book. I know that's so silly, but like with any trade paperback or something... Or like a hardcover that's really, the binding's really tight. I feel like it's a struggle sometimes. I know that, again, I know that's silly, but like it's a thing that affects your reading because you start thinking about the fact that you're holding a book and you're not just enjoying the story. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, and I agree. And we, we talk about that stuff a lot, but it matters. And I, you know, I hope publishers continue to realize that. That format yeah. really does matter. Yeah, it and really does. It really does matter. Like it, People think about that. And collectors like us, we spend a lot of time thinking about what looks good on the shelf. Like, what's easy to read and what looks good on the shelf? You know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but you should, actually. (laughs) Sometimes you should. It's a good cover, by the way, like we were talking about. And don't let the size put you off. I know some people are like, oh, if it's like a weird size book, I don't know where to put it. I mean, this one's so small, though, you can really fit it anywhere. It's, it's, It's easy to put on your shelf and display. I would like to showcase books like this. Yeah. So if you're a new collector like me, um, I have a lot of empty spots in all of my, my billies, <laughs> my billies from Ikea. And so I like to showcase some books, depending on what I'm into at the time. And like, this is definitely like by itself showcase. Cause look at that. Look at that. So good. So uh, I mean, Hayden says they need to read this now, but they spent all their money buying uh, <laughs> Kamala Khan hardcovers. If Rhea was here right now, she would be so touched. She'd be applauding you. Yeah, because... We applaud you for her. (laughs) You chose a good one. And yeah... Yeah, It's hard to know what else to say here because we don't want to spoil it because we want people to read this book. But other than... You need to pick this up. um, IST right now. You can use the code. It's the weekend. You're going to get it for a good price with that code. And pick up Upgrade Soul too if you haven't because it's so worth it. Absolutely. So yeah, absolutely recommend. And uh, now we're just gonna shoot the shit and just chill and talk. So <laughs> if you guys are cool with us talking just comics for a while, that's what we're gonna do. It's we like Friday. To we're just flying by a seat of our pants and we're hanging out. So um, Maddie's got pizza rolls. I'm jealous. It's a whole thing. <laughs> oh, I, and also the comic book fairy brought me some comic books. <gasps> wow. And by the comic fairy, I mean Marvel. <laughs> My other channel is sponsored by Marvel, which is a it's pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. Means I have like this um, growing pile of books I need to read and film myself reviewing. That's like slowly. Is it getting to you? Yeah, it's getting to me. <laughs> um, but I did get Shuri. Ooh. I never read it felt... Shuri. So that's a good I'm, cover. Yeah, look how pretty that is. Um, I like it. I've never read any, so I'm, I'm really excited to jump in and try it out. And I also got, God, I hate this cover. Sorry, Amanda Connor. Um, but I also got that uh, new oh, Captain God. Marvel trade. It's so bad. I I, know. I hate saying that too. And as, yeah, especially because Amanda Connor, I like some other things that she's done, but every Captain Marvel cover I've seen that she's done, I'm I'm cringing real hardcore. It's not. I, know. Oh. You know, I thought about this today after, because Omar brought it to me. And I just. I love Amanda Connor's art. I just don't think that I like her with Captain Marvel. And again, I haven't read the book yet. Well, I, well, I guess she does his covers. I don't, I like her with Harley Quinn. I don't think I like Captain Marvel, her style. I just, I don't know what it is. It's the face. Yeah, it's it, the face. It bothers me. <laughs> can you put that a little closer so people can see the face? I feel like it's the face. Like, 
it's just super like it's way too masculine i think yeah and and listen that's coming from me and kristen we like a masculine yeah i'm cool with that but that's uh not right that it just doesn't look like captain marvel yeah that's someone else i don't know who that is yeah i don't know who this girl is i don't know i don't know her (laughs) um but i'm excited to read it because the art inside looks pretty great uh, this is Kelly Thompson, so that's our girl. So I, I, I'm, I'm still pretty pumped to jump into it. But also, somebody please remind me to do to thank you, Hayden. We aren't either. Oh my gosh, we went on you and on about that. Like, like, I mean, you said you, <laughs> well, Hayden also says um, they've been going back and watching other lives. Uh-oh. I'm sure you'll run it. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. But I'm sure you'll run into that one where Miss Marvel uh, Omnibus was coming out, and we were like, "What is this cover?" <laughs> like, we know. all hated it, and I mean, felt Ugh. awful about it. But yeah. like, uh, that matters. It really was like, I, it made me not want to buy it. Really, truly, yeah. Bad. Speaking of covers, um, <laughs> did you see that? They were talking about in the group at that Red Sonia, Gail Simone omnibus that's coming out. Oh yeah, everyone. Was, <laughs> everyone was very thrown off by what that looks like. I, I don't have a picture of it or anything, but um, yeah, it looks like your mom's favorite like detective novel or something. <laughs> it reminded me of like um, a really minimalist YA fantasy novel cover. Cause it's just, and it's just like text, right? And there's maybe something on it. I can't, I forget what it looks like exactly, but there's not much going on. And, and usually like that can look really nice on like a novel. I don't know. I mean, when it's on a comic book, you're like, where's the showcase of the art, right? Well, like, yeah. And it, it doesn't match what's inside. Yeah. And I think you have to consider that too. Like people are going to be thrown off because they're expecting a certain thing and then they open up and it's not at all what they're getting. And yeah, that, definitely. That's the case with that because you see this like white and red, and you can barely see what it is. It's very odd. Like who, who did that? Who was like, yeah, you know, that got past like tons of people. Man, We're all like, know, this is great. <laughs> there's some things that I really love at Dynamite, and then I they they just make some questionable decisions sometimes. Mm. They make it really hard for me as like a a Dynamite fan. <laughs> they You're really not do. thinking of Christopher Priest, are you? It's we fine. Wanted, yeah, we've talked about that. God. It's a thing. I'm still upset about Vampirella. I'm sorry. I want it to be good. <laughs> I'm so upset I mean? about that interview. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Ooh. Yes. Omar's like, why? You just don't like. I was like, read the interview. Yeah, please. Um, Hayden said he's going to get the epic collections of the omnibus. That's probably a good idea. Definitely. And honestly, like, we, so many people at comic book collectors tend to prioritize omnibuses over other. Uh, collected editions. Man, I, I agree. I do agree. I think you yeah. really have to compare and pick and choose. You know, like we have that Wonder Woman on the bus, uh, New 52 one, right? Now, for me, looking at that, I don't think it looks as nice as the Absolutes. The Absolutes look a lot better. And of course, there's two of those versus one omnibus, but sometimes those, D- those DC omnibuses are way too big. Mm. So big. Like I have um, <laughs> Gotham Central somewhere. And it's enormous. I mean, it opens fine, and it's fine, but it's so big that, like, it's daunting. It makes me not want to read. <laughs> yeah. So um, our other kind of topic we were going to talk about last show, but then we got to chit chat about other things and Spice Girls, as it were. Yeah. Um, was all of the books that we have but haven't read. I mean, and if we did all of them, we would have, like, 400 hours on, oh, and I think we would fall asleep. But... <laughs> Basically, like, because there's that concept yeah. in Japan that's talked about a lot. Then the word for it is sundoku, which means that you like have all these books that you buy, but you never read. And I'm getting to the point in my collection where I might be at half and half. Yeah, I feel like that happens so often with, I mean, all of our viewers, and we fall into that trap. And it's just like I haven't bought in in quite a while now. But I also haven't been reading tons. So I feel like I'm at a very like, well, I'm not adding to it, but I'm not helping it at all. Do you have any like ways to get through your books or like, um, because I know that your dad has like an in and out pile, right? 
Yeah, he's good at that. He has like a, a way that he prioritizes and go and goes through them. Do you like ever feel any guilt about it? I do. I feel like it's oh, like, yeah. staring at me. I'm like, okay, I have to schedule time. Well, and I think for both of us, um, hi Robin, by the way. I know she she's just. <laughs> I love it. She's the life of the party. I mean, she's um, just carrying up this computer seat behind me. It's like, <laughs> look at what are you doing. I I love it. If Buffy were in here, she'd be doing the same thing. She's all about the shoulders. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I have no way to do it. I mean, I think especially you can relate to this. Like, I have certain things that I have to read for certain shows in a certain amount of time. Like tomorrow, um, if anyone wants to check it out at, I believe, 2 p.m. Eastern. I get confused because I'm in a different time zone. But I think that's right. On um, the Omni Dogs Vault with a Jess, we are doing a review show that we do every other week. And I haven't read a ton at all. So tonight I'm like, well, this is how I'm going to prioritize that. I need to find all of my thin trades. <laughs> and I need to read those books. So I have something to review because I have had a long work week and I've had a lot going on. And I've had a whole cat situation. So <laughs> that sounds fake, but it's true. But, um, and that's how I'm going to prioritize that. And so all these big omnis like Gotham Central are just sitting there unread because I'm not going to read that in a night. Whereas I can take it with you. That's really yeah. what you I love them yeah. on my shelf. They're beautiful. But like my, my coworkers don't know about, I mean, mostly don't know about my other nerdier pursuits. I know, you're probably like, Maddie, but how do you hide it? It's so obvious. <laughs> but they don't know. My boss doesn't know. You know, my most of my coworkers don't know. And other people in my workplace don't know. So I, I'll go out and read comic books at lunch or I'll go outside or something, but I go farther away. I can hide thin traits. I can't hide a whole ass omnibus. <laughs> so I'm not taking that with me outside yeah. of the world to read. That's a very no. much at home deal. But yeah, th those do not travel well, that's for no, sure. No. And it doesn't help. I don't know if you could get lost in this. We've kind of talked about it last time, but you know, we got the Shonen Jump app now. Oh, and yeah. We have... I have one piece today. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's, you know, that's that's a trap that you fall in. It's $2 a month, and I can't get out of it because it's so, it's just the best deal of everything. $2 Literally all month. of them. It's wild. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, they could it's charge crazy. way more than that. <laughs> And they keep adding stuff. They're not even like, oh. like things aren't being taken away on there. They just keep adding stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah. You can read all of One Piece. That's like 953 <laughs> chapters. <laughs> Which let's talk about that because I got that. I mean, I've talked about this before, but um, that first box set of the manga, I got probably girl, probably like three years ago now. Okay. And it's just been sitting on my shelf. I read the first volume years ago and I just didn't, I got distracted by other things in my life and what prevented me I just have a volume here but what prevented me from picking this up was always well you're on volume like 90 something now I don't want to feel like I have to buy the next two box sets the moment I finish reading those 20 something volumes right yeah but now I don't have an excuse so I'm going to fix it. that soon yeah but that's been a hurdle and I feel like I have that with a lot of my stuff where I only have a certain amount of volumes and I don't have the money to like finish that yet so yeah. I'm not going to touch them yet because but when I get to that point I'm going to be like I, I don't know what happens and if I stop well then it's two years later and I don't know what what happened by the time I get those yeah. volumes or whatever you know sometimes I'll like I'll go to read something and I get to the end of what I have physically and then in a moment of weakness I buy the next volume digitally mm. and it's an impulse buy purchase <laughs> and that's like the worst thing I'm like oh damn it that sucks because you feel like you gotta buy it physically later right and you're like why did I pay yeah. twice so I don't know if you're like me but for me like um I've talked about on the show before but I go through like kind of highs and lows with it but like binges mm. for things um but it's like types of media at a time like i'm always watching shows that's always but like i feel like i'm always going between like maybe um maybe i'm reading a ton of comics at once and i'm just doing comics all the time or i'm just playing video games all the time or i'm just doing something else and i feel like summer's not the season for me to catch up on like comic books in the winter it's perfect 
Yeah, I've got a, like stay a, inside a, and, yeah. a kotatsu table. So like a, it's a heated table. And then in the winter, I sit in my comic book room and I read. But then the rest of the year, like, I go through these lows where I'm not reading as much except for my shows, right? And so I, it's, it's man, I need, I need an adult in my life to be like, hey, Maddie, listen, you have too many books. <laughs> You've got to read what you've got before you buy anymore. Because I'm just still, like... I mean, that's literally what my dad says <laughs> to me. And I'm like, Dad, I can't. It's too much. I, can't. I have to have this one. You don't understand. <laughs> It'll go out of print. <laughs> yes, and that's out. another thing, right? Like, it's God. so... You know, it's and that's difficult. the problem. If Boom... <laughs> yeah, oof. Boom. Didn't... Yeah, I'm already scared wow. about the Steven Universe book that you showed off and made me want really bad. And I'm like, well, but I also need to finish Steven Universe. So, like, what do I do? <laughs> and the movie comes out on Tuesday. Oh. Uh, or Monday? I don't know. It's coming out next week. I gotta get caught up. And There's now, too much and now I want all the See, and the other problem is people like us. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Mary's right. I was about to say that. No, the problem is yeah. we do each other. Oh yes, my gosh, do, Mary, so much. Mary and I do this to each other. Gosh, <laughs> I'll be like browsing a website, or she'll be like, "Hey, I'm on this website." I'm like, "I know it's bad," and then we find deals. When you oh, find yeah. something for like sixty eight percent off online, like how do you pass that up? It's so hard. Yeah. And you and Mary and Free and all these other people we know are always post about stuff they're into. And then I want to be <laughs> into them. And then I yeah, do like that's cool. you guys. Because like you showed those Adventure Time Mathematical Editions. And now I have to have them. You do, though. And I'm pissed. <laughs> I know. They're so nice. Yeah, Mary. And I didn't finish them. Her response is always get it. <laughs> I and mean. Jenny said one can never have too many books. You're probably wrong. <laughs> but we'll continue to say things like that, sure. I mean, I feel like there's a point where it's too many. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't know. I've seen Omar's wrong. collection. He's still buying stuff. Yeah. He How does he have books. room? And okay. I never sell books. Yeah. I've. You know what? I've been doing that lately, taking stuff to, like, Second you know, and Second and Charles, um, where they don't give you crap for it, but I don't have to deal with shipping them. So it's nice. That's true. Like, I, well, I will take it back. I do bring stuff to half price books but but usually it is duplicates mm. that I've accidentally bought or it's like I recently got rid of a lot of my older manga that I don't read because I've I'm really reevaluating how that is going because like we talked about it before I've mentioned it a lot of times but but being a manga collector is like a trap. <laughs> Not that comic books aren't, but comic books are easier to collect and keep in control, I feel like. Mm. But manga, man, they're so quick to read and they still take up so much space <laughs> i mean i think you can do it in a good way like you, you've seen this room you know i have the one manga shelf yeah. and i've kept to that so i don't go over it and a lot of my series like end in a low number See. except i guess one piece but i think at this point i'm never because i can get it digitally i'm probably just gonna end up selling these because i'm never gonna get this yeah. other box sets i'm gonna but, invent eventually yeah i owe it that's fair. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think it's, especially if it's Our like danger. a series that you adore. Yeah. You know, it, it makes sense. Like I'm never, like, I love monster. That's going to stay there. Cause I'll probably reread monster, you know, and there's certain things that I'm like, Oh, I, I'll get rid of this. And I've gotten rid of some manga lately. It's just like the stuff I get rid of. I'm like, well, even if I loved it, am I ever going to read that again? Like I got rid of uh, wrinkles. Do you remember that book? Like free. And I read that and it's yeah. just a sad story and it was great. And I love the art. But I was like, I'm never going to read this again because it's just bummed me out too much. <laughs> like, I don't want to read it again. Yeah. So, so why I, keep it, right? It's hard. Yeah. And like a lot of manga series I'm into and I really like are really long. You know, with the, with yeah. the exception of being Naoki Urasawa series and Junji Ito, you know, Junji mm -hmm. Ito, I mean, those books are just beautiful. Again, huh. there's so those nice. beautiful hardcovers that look great on your shelf. Mm -hmm. I have one beside me. I'm inclined to have them. And yeah, this was um, another are, one that I need to read that I haven't read and everyone has. Yeah, it's been sitting on my shelf for so long. I'm like, why haven't I? I talk Uzumaki. Oh my god! And that's the only Junji Ito book I've read. But man, I, I gotta love do it. horror, and it blew my mind. Oh, oh! My sister just told me someone on Facebook is selling all Buffy season eight library editions for above. Yeah, you uh, should buy it. Yeah, you should buy it anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah, listen. Ship to you. Always buy Buffy books. Yeah. Always. Also, that's a that's a crazy deal. Oh yeah, that's really because those are grossly out of print now. You will walk in a half price and find them for like 150 each. It's maybe insane. More. Ooh, I did just pick up because I had. I keep doing this thing where I think I'm almost done with my collection, and then I realize I'm missing something. <laughs> but um, I found the Buffy Tales. Oh book yeah, for mm-hmm. like 15 bucks. That's half amazing. Price. Like yeah. the library edition. Oh, huh? so I still have to get Illyria. I did see it once in person. But if anyone's like a really big fan of our show and like loves me, um, and like what I think that's one just get it Illyria. digitally. It is not worth that price. It's crazy. I don't, it's a completionist. Oh, uh, hey, 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 I, so they can't uh, get. Oh, sorry, Aiden. Sucks. That's lame. Well, if you but, have two copies of Illyria, I still need it too. But I just don't think I'll ever find it. At one time I did, and someone bought it. Oh, sorry, you did miss the bottom feeders review. Oh, I love your profile picture. Very nice. <laughs> you know what I like. Yeah, we already reviewed bottom feeders. Basically, here's my review. It's great. You should buy it. Uh, don't look up anything about it. Just get it. Here's what the book looks like. Ezra Clayton Daniels is basically like, I don't know, the best. So just read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. that's what i say it's beautiful the writing's great it. oh you read it oh okay so you got it well then you know you know you know it's good <laughs> you already know it's fantastic uh smotlock said they got adventure zone from the library yay yeah it was maddie talking about that i need to get it yeah you do it's really great yeah. they're really i mean the art's wonderful i really like it and actually i finally got back into the adventure zone podcast because i wasn't listening to the newest mm-hmm. storyline, but I, I, it's been enough time in between balance and amnesty that I'm back in. I need to get back in too. So I'm, I'm really digging it. And I'm glad I took that time because it was hard trying something new after balance was over. I think a lot of people thought that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have Slayer by Kirsten White? Um, I know about this. I haven't read it. I I don't plan to buy it. I plan to get it at the library because it is available at like every library. Um, it's like a young adult spinoff novel about a slayer. Oh, okay, like the like a novel. Mm-hmm. Is this a novel? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I haven't, but I'll probably pick it up eventually. Yeah, I mean, people like a lot of people hated the. Um, the whole potential Slayer thing in season seven, but I love that stuff. Like I was all about that. And, and the whole thing, one of my favorite episodes is still potential. The episode that Dawn thought she was a potential Slayer. Oh, that's so good. People hate on Dawn, but I always liked Dawn. I think Dawn was always a cool character to have in there. Cause you I feel like it's, like- it's something you needed, like, and it was unique, but. People She's hate teens. Girl. Yeah, people people can't stand <laughs> teens. Like Faria. Faria would have hated Don. <laughs> Faria hates teenagers. Yeah. We've learned that. She doesn't understand them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Their emotions. <laughs> okay, Hayden says it ties into the origin comic too. That's cool. Oh, cool. Now have to read that. Smart like you do. Everyone at home listen. <laughs> Check out the Adventure Zone comic. It's really good. Also, for people who tuned in that expect us to go ahead and talk about bottom fears, we did. It was very quick, so I'm sorry that we're just chatting now, but that's usually how this goes. It's it's one of those things that we didn't want to ruin the whole story, but we loved it, and you should buy it. Yeah. Uh, have either of you read The Sound of the World by Heart by... No. N- no. Don't even try it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look that up. The Sound of the World by Heart. This sounds yeah. like a... Like a manga or something. It oh, does sound like a manga. It's cool. It's a graphic novel, but the art looks really, really neat. Oh, uh, I'll check it out. Yeah, it's a. I like that cover. Yeah. Oh, Lion Forge. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> 
Did you see that comment? Uh, too bad Free is not here. We need to ask her why she gave Bottom Feeders three out of five oh, stars in good rates. Really? What's that about? I don't know what that's about, but we could, tell us. Well, we could ask her Sunday. <laughs> yeah, we'll ask her on Sunday. Oh, what's that about? Oh, that comic that uh, Smotlock was talking about? It looks like uh, The Sound of the World by Heart is about an experiment in social, is social isolation um, where a photojournalist commits to chronicle 60 days in New York City without talking to a single person. Which sounds really cool. Hmm. That does sound cool. Yeah. That sounds cool to me. I keep playing with this, these pens beside me, so I gotta, I gotta show everyone. Uh, I'm all about enamel pens. I'm that person. Okay. I've been sucked in. Um, <laughs> I have. Oh my gosh! I have to go to the other room. Jacket. So like. Oh, I have um like three canvases in the other room. It's bad, but uh, I can show you these two, which is from the last Nick box, uh, and they're Angry Beavers. Oh. Oh, if it'll maybe. Uh, That's uh, so great. I gotta do the YouTube thing. It's not working. Oh, it oh. kind of worked. Oh, it oh, did. Yay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there's Norm, uh, Norbert and Daggett. I can't remember who's who now. Yeah, but... I love Angry Beavers. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, it almost worked. <laughs> but I love them. So, They're very cute. Speaking of Nickelodeon stuff, how did you, did you watch Rocco's Modern Life, the new one? Yes, I did. I haven't watched it yet. So what's your review? Girl, here's my review, guys. People have been asking me about this. Um, you're a Nickelodeon uh, expert, I feel like here. I mean, I do, I do love Nicktoons. I am all about that nostalgia right now. Um, Rocco was one of my all-time favorites. The Boom comic. Um, there's two volumes of the series, and they're about to come out with Afterlife, which is like a zombie apocalypse Rocco thing. They're all amazing, so check those out. And so is the Rugrats comic. But uh, the Rocco Netflix movie was fantastic. They they basically start the whole thing out. I mean, if you guys have seen the trailer, I guess you know this, but they're like like Rocco's house and his friends are like in space and they've been there since the 90s. So something happened where a rocket went through the house and so they're stuck up there and they finally figure out how to get it back down. And then everything has changed because it's current day, but they're used to everything in the 90s. So, you know, Rocco goes up to like, the comic shop he used to work at and it's closed and you know there's all these like oh hey these things in the 90s we didn't have are different now or totally gone or replaced with like something crazy it's so good and there was like a really well done trans story which i didn't uh -huh. expect so anyone looking for a story like that it was very well done i feel like they had like a sensitivity like reader for the script or something because it was great uh, i'd love to know what like a trans person thought about it but i read some articles and there were positive reviews and i think it was super well done so that was like really unexpected and really cool okay cool yeah. actually i've been putting it off i'm gonna watch it it's oh, short then, too you know, so. i was i was just about to ask about that because we have Aww. another kind of returning older show i haven't watched it yet yeah. invader zim just came back but Hayden says that Mary Zim movie let him down. Oh, but Hayden loved Rocco. Yeah. I always, I mean, Rocco was my favorite. Well, in Zim, like, I felt like it was really popular for the age that I was at at the time because I just wanted edgy edge stuff all the time. <laughs> and I'm like 28 now. And I just don't think, like, I, I don't think I could go back and watch Invader Zim and be like, yep. See, it's it's weird. I think it's like a, I think it's a certain like a really specific age thing too, because I was never like hardcore into Invader Zim. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not even sure that I ever watched it all. Like, and Reed is a few years younger than me, and he was all about it. So I think I was just maybe I'd aged out at that point. Maybe of, like Nicktoons. Um, I mean, I I'd like to go it. back and I'd like to go back and watch it all, but because I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know if it aged well, but. I would like. I would be interested, uh, but he's really excited about it. So I, I'm curious what he's gonna think. You know what I think would age very well. They should bring back is Courage the Cowardly Dog. Like I want Ooh. comic books. I want to show. Yes, that's something I could keep reading or watching. I st those are still good. I think they had some comics, but it was short lived. Yeah, yeah. they, they did some Cartoon Network. Network stuff from that time. Like that'd be a good one. Yeah, I think. I think I like um if they do it right a Ren and Stimpy 
movie would be good too. Yeah. If they if they ignore all the weird like MTV stuff they did or whatever FX or whatever it was, that <laughs> yeah. was not it was a that weird was not time. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I remember when that came back, I was very confused. I was like, I don't remember it being this raunchy. I think I tried to watch it. It was just like, no, this isn't for me. I'm gonna remember the good old Nickelodeon yeah. stuff, you know. And it was always like a little too much for kids, but I yeah. still loved it. And you um, know, there's always I feel like a lot of kids shows need to be kind of like teetering on the edge of that, anyways. Especially back then. Oh yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Well, I don't know if I have anything else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Oh, hey, speaking of Rin and Simpy, I had a pile of stuff that like bit, has been on my shelf that I haven't read yet. And oh, one of them is an old Rin and Simpy Marvel trade uh, from the comics that came out back then, which come on. And I've been actually like I got I had a collection of those comics when I was a kid that I was putting together. And I have that here in my house now. And I've been like fi- picking up the issues that like I didn't have and you know, getting those together. And then I've just found this trade somewhere. So I want to read it because look at how great. That looks pretty great. So I'm excited about that. But, and Buffy's still good. I'll say that. I read this issue. Um, although, catch up. although the art, like the art, you I'm know what? Scared. Are you I mentioned me? this last time. I want, I want you to see it. Hold on. I mean, God, I feel so bad being mean to artists, but like, what is happening? Could you see this? Like, yeah, I'm gonna uh, full frame you. Oh, that's just me. Oh, no. <laughs> I would do this. <laughs> wait, uh, I can't see what you're seeing, so I don't even oh, know. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, like, it's not like, bad, but it's not Dan Mora. Her eyes, though. Well, they're closed <laughs> yeah. there. Like, I just. I just it's really the eyes that are getting me um and every every character's eyes are like that um this is a good issue for it because like in the middle it's not even their art whoever this is and that art like the middle art's pretty good actually like i like this art um but that was just like her dream art so it wasn't (laughs) the main guy okay here we go there's a good example what is happening with xander's face like no i don't like it i'm very upset i want dan Moore back too and oh man i'm so bummed i don't know wait wait, i did the weird layout with us (laughs) um that's a bummer because like i was worried about that because i knew that dan Moore would be temporary yeah, but, but he's so good. I mean, he was killing it. Man. I don't know. It's a bummer. Did you want to show us anything else from your stack? Or? Um, I also got Canto Volume 3, but that's about it. And it, I still love these covers. Also, uh, there's Captain Marvel with Goose on the back. I like that cover a lot. Yeah. I think that's all I have. I mean, I'm not really. Um, I'm gonna get something on IST for that sale, which, by the way, you guys should check out. Um, it's the weekend is the code. You get an extra three yeah, percent off. I have to jump on it. I think. I haven't bought There's anything in in over a month, so and I need Heathen, so we're gonna we're gonna do that again, guys. Check out Heathen. It's gonna yeah. uh, be off the site and more money for you. Not off the site, but it'll cost more. It will be a deal of the week. Uh, that'll end Tuesday. So check it out with this discount it's gonna be your best bet sorry i just i stopped to go look at what books came out <laughs> I had uh, to do all of it. i'm trying to figure out what to buy because i really want to get caught up on my 20th century volumes yeah especially after you showed them off yeah so and i, have, I haven't read all that series but i really like what i've read yeah, so I, 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 it, but, I mean, I love the movies. Just so I need to much. find those. Yeah. Whenever you come to visit, we should watch one. Let's do it. We should watch. I'll show you Monster Two because I've got it. Just bring bring a bring your computer. I'll I'll move someone over to you. You got it. Oh, Let's do it. Monster, and you're in Kentucky, <laughs> and you're not like a a murderer. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not Starbucks. <laughs> I'll give you the. I'll give you a copy. We'll of have an exchange there. <laughs> uh, uh, stuff coming out, by the way. Is that what you're looking up um, next like, week? I was looking at the the uh, recently released. Um, yeah. Well, in addition to that, 
we're looking at next week, um, Assassination Classroom box set is coming out. I've read like half that series and I really enjoyed it. You're like, I don't. Do it. I like what I've read. I don't know. I might, um, something that I hadn't picked up yet that I need to pick up is uh, Mars Attacks. Oh yeah. I loved it, but I haven't, I haven't bought the trade yet. Um, and I was recently talking about that again with someone and man, I, God, I still love Mars Attack so much. So good. It's like absolute 10 out of 10. For anyone who hasn't oh. heard us talk about this, uh, it's written by Kyle Starks, art by Chris, Chris Schweitzer, and they're both incredible together. Oh Yeah. If, I mean, you don't need to know anything about the movie or the card game because I'm not familiar with either one. You just got to know that this is a story about a father and son who are having a rough relationship and aliens attack. Yeah, and, it's, and it's that's a, the whole thing. It's a single volume. It's a one-shot. Yep. It's self-contained. God, I love it. And, and so good. it also kind of makes it makes me a little happy when I was, I was reading it, too, because then I could also think about because Kyla and Chris are like best friends. Mm-hmm. And so knowing that they got to work together on this kind of warms my heart a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're... So, they're guys. Oh, I love Mars Attacks. I just want to, like, push them to everyone. I should just buy, like, 100 copies and just keep them. And <laughs> keep it to everyone. Yes. Party favors in my wedding. Here you go. <laughs> Here's Mars Attacks. Uh, Spot Lock says the Mars Attack movie is great. Haven't read any comics. Yeah, you gotta read this one. I love like, the movie, too. This one. I st- I've never seen the movie. I don't know. I've just never seen it. Um, Hayden says we should read Boom's Jim Henson stuff. I heard it's good. I'd be interested to check it. I was never one of those like a lot of people grew up on Jim Henson stuff, and I didn't. Yeah, I didn't either. So like, I don't have that same relation. Some people do. Like, I know some people. I've got some friends that are all about it. Um, yeah, Dark Crystal coming back. Some people cosplayed from it too. Um, I didn't watch like even Labyrinth until high school. And same with Dark Crystal, and I, I'm not, I'm not a Dark Crystal fan, I think, but I did like Labyrinth a lot, so I'd be down to read the comic for that because I mean David Bowie, he's so cool. Who doesn't like David Bowie? Come yeah. On. Um, Smotlock also says Colin Bunn writes so many comics at so, at so many different comics. Do you mean publishers? <laughs> they're all good. Yeah. Are they? Well, I don't think they're all. Are they? Because I read something recently he did that I hated. <laughs> So I really liked, oh gosh, I already forgot. I did like a reviews in a flash on my other channel, but he had written a horror comic set in like the South that I loved. But in the same vein though, I reviewed another book by him that was uh, like a King Arthur kind of book. I think it's called Holy Grail and I wicked didn't like that. Yeah, I think it's kind of hit or miss with the stuff I read because I can't really remember. I've, I've liked some stuff I've read from him, but then... Um... Small Ox asked me what it was. Yeah, it was Blossom 666, which is the uh, twins from the Archie universe. And they were, they're they like in a cult in it. It's like part of the Archie horror series, uh, which I've liked some of. But, oh, man. Like, it was one of those things that was consistently fine. And I was like, oh, where's it going to go? Because it's only like a mini series, So I got it on Hoopla. And uh, I'm glad I didn't pay for it. Because that end was so bad. Guys, it ended literally by saying, the end? Question mark? And I was like, uh-uh. Never do that. <laughs> like It was such a, just such a cop-out and ridiculous. So it was like so cheesy. And I really, it made me so mad at the end. I hated that. <laughs> mm. All right. Well... So, Kristen, we will be on again on Sunday. Now, I really appreciate you guys being so understanding. We've had some different things kind of pop up, and our schedules have changed. And we're so sorry. Like, last Sunday, I was out of town. I thought I'd be back in time, and I just wasn't. <laughs> um, yeah, it happens. You can blame my D&D crew. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we really appreciate you guys still, like, you know, checking in with us and, and still watching the show, even we had kind of had to move around our schedule. But... Sunday, the plan is to be at a regular time. Uh, I think, well, you know, guys, we'll update you guys on Twitter. You can check us out at Fangirls Live. You know, at nighttime. Yeah, we think it'll be around nighttime. Seven or eight, you know, probably <laughs> seven. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Smotlock, thank you. Glad you're not sick anymore, Maddie. I, 
thank you. I missed two live shows this week because I was sick. That's sad. Oh, yeah, you guys are going to read Blankets. I'm so excited about that. I did read Blankets. Oh, my God. It's so good. I loved it so much. I read that many years ago. I gave it to my dad to read, and he loved it. And, like, we we kind of bonded over, like, our love for it, and that was pretty cool. But I love Craig Thompson. Mm. Everything I've read of his, I love. Uh, Hayden, Spice Girls update. <laughs> 2020 release, <laughs> possibly summer. Thank oh you. Gosh. Thank you for that. Uh, very excited. Wish it was this year, but I'm I'll live. To cosplay from it. I think we should uh, get a whole group together. So good. <laughs> I read blankets standing in a Walden book from beginning to end. <laughs> Man, a Walden book. That's, funny. That's a throwback. <laughs> Oh, Smollock also said uh, his favorite is Goodbye Chunky Rice. Oh, I love Goodbye Chunky Rice. I, 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 like, I read Blankets and I was like, I gotta read everything by this guy. This oh, guy yeah. rules. All right. So um, thank you all for joining. And again, if you need to buy some books, yes, go jump on over to InStockTrades.com. Use the code It's the Weekend for an extra, what, 3% off? 3% off. Um, um, they're really already low prices. Picking up bottom feeders, just go ahead and grab that. Mm -hmm. Grab Peter Volume 2. Um, yeah. Grab um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer by Boom. The first trade is out. Please do that. Even if you're not into Buffy, uh, it's very accessible. You can jump right in because it's a totally different universe and situation. And grab Mars Attacks while you're at it. Yes. And Sex Castle. We'll just promote all of Kyle Kyle's books. We love it's Kyle. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for checking us out. We'll see you Sunday. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful weekend. If you have the weekend off, if not, good luck with working. And I hope you make yeah, it. Yeah, I feel fun. for you, if not, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We love you guys. Bye, see guys. You. And the podcast. We don't know when to end.